And session three continues. This video, utils class. So what exactly is the utils class, Lee, and why do we need it? Well, the utils class is just kind of a generic class that I'm putting together to throw various utility methods in that we need. Okay. The reason we need them is because Unity itself doesn't really support multi-threading, but we want to use multi-threading and uh, we have to compensate for some of the potential problems that we run into with Unity. Speaking of when which... Use, when using multi-threading, right? When using multi-threading. And because part of this session is to get this whole project in shape for dealing with multi-threading, that's why we're going to be putting this class together. Okay. But uh, specifically, the reason um, we run into the problem where it becomes a big issue is once you start calling things inside of multi-threading, we don't get exception errors or debug errors like you would expect. So we don't get a trace that tracks all the way back down to exactly where the problem was. If we're lucky, we might get a trace to the last line that was called before it jumped into a thread where it crashed. So that sometimes kind of helps. But uh, even more often than not, it just crashes and we get no error messages whatsoever. Gotcha. So one of the things while integrating multi-threading into this uh, tech demo that I found was that there were two or one particular uh, math f function that would cause the uh, the system to crash. That being the uh, lerp function. So what I've done is written um, my own lerp function which also required me to write my own clamp function because I can't use the uh, math, not the math F, but the uh, um, C-sharp version of math because math doesn't have a lerp or a clamp. So I had to write those two mathematical uh, methods into our utils class so we can call those. So that's what this class is all about. Okay. Now, something that's also weird is uh, now with 3.3, Mm -hmm. um, there was one part of my code that seems to run with the mathf.lerp function, so I'm not sure what that is about. But when I was using 3.2, it was crashing, which is why I wrote this. Gotcha. So just better safe than sorry. The uh, lerp is not a difficult thing to write, so we'll go ahead and uh, create it. Now, where I put this is inside of the code base. But instead of including it into demos, because it's a, a generalized util um, type class, where I'm going to put it instead is going to be under the demo framework. So I'll go ahead and add a, a new item. And I'll just name this uh, utils.cs. Go ahead and hit enter. I don't need any of this top part, fix up the namespace. Oops. Now, because this is holding utilities, I don't want to instantiate this class, so I'm going to make it a public static class. And for now, it's only going to contain two methods. We're going to have a public static uh, method that returns a float called lerp because the only lerp that I need right now is a float. We could probably overload uh, this and make multiples or switch it up to use generics if uh, it turns out that we need more than one type of float. So the lerp is going to take in two or three values, the first being v1 float 2 being uh, v2, and the third one being the amount, so amt. Go ahead and schedule, or, uh, skeleton that in. The uh, second is going to be, again, public static. This is going to return a float. This one's going to be called clamp. It's going to take in our float min, our float 
max and our float value. So this is what I'll handle ensuring that whatever we pass in does not go less than our min or greater than our max. So let's start off with the clamp because we're going to need the clamp inside of the lerp, which is why I skeleton in both to begin with. Now to start off with, we need to compare what happens if somebody puts in a min and max in reverse order. So we want to ensure that we're always truly using the min and max. So we need to create a temp value in case for some reason the values came in backwards and we need to reverse them. So what we'll do is do a conditional check to see if max is less than min. If that's the case, then our values are backwards and we need to reverse them. So we're going to say temp is going to equal our min. Our min is going to equal our max. And our max will equal our temp. And actually, I can just clean this up. Yay! Don't worry, I'll get to it. <laughs> it's so good. I'm being quiet. Well, at first I wasn't sure if I was going to use it somewhere else. And then uh, if value is less than min, then um, actually let's just do, no, I need two different ones. I was thinking about just doing, uh, doing it a different way, but forget it. I'll do it the way my notes say. So if it's less than min, val equals min. If val is greater than the max, then val equals max. And then we're going to return our val, our value. So this will kick it back out. Now we can use it up here. Now, for our lerp, we need to do a little bit of math. We need to look at our starting point. So we look at our very first point and then we look at where we need to go. And we want to um, basically interpolate in between these two values by the amount. So we're going to start at V1 and then to the value of V1 we're going to add the uh, difference between V2 minus V1 and then we're going to multiply that by our amount. I like spaces between my uh, operators. So this is basically looking at the difference, multiplying it by our amount, and adding the uh, um, fractional amount to V1. So if amount is 0.5, it's going, and let's say uh, 1 is a value of 0 and uh, V2 is a value of 10. So it'll take uh, 10 minus 0, which is 10, times 0. 0.5, which is 5, add 5 to V1, which is 0, which gives us a value of 5. Likewise, any uh, value you put in here. But if you were to go to, say, some sort of positive number where you've got uh, 1.2, and somebody sends in 1.2 on this, that is actually going to end up at a value that is greater than V2, which is why we need the clamp. So we'll then say val equals the clamp of our min and a max. We know our min, we don't want any value ever lower than V1. And we don't want any value greater than V2. And then we're going to send in our original value that we computed. So this is going to make sure that we never go less than or greater than these values, which is also why we're not sure what we're going to get in. Somebody could literally put in a value that is larger um, in V1 than what they put in V2. And we still want our, clap, our, our clamp to work correctly, which is why we're checking this condition. Once we've uh, gone through the clamp operation, we return that value. And that gives us the functionality we need for the utils class. 
which is something that we're going to need when we start uh, replacing the uh, LERP operations inside of our terrain generator and basically anything that runs inside of uh, inside of a thread or is going to run inside of a thread that needs to do a LERP operation. Okay. So that's pretty much it for this video. All right. It's fantastic. kind of simple. I can just build and make sure there's no errors. Awesome. All right. Well, that will wrap things up. Thanks a lot, everyone.